This is the Criterion Creeps podcast, and tonight we're talking about Do the Right Thing from 1989, directed by Spike Lee. The tagline for this movie, it's the hottest day of the summer, you can do nothing, you can do something, or you can, I guess, do the right thing. Uh, And the (laughs) synopsis from our good friends at Letterboxd, Mm. on the hottest day of the year on a street in the Bedford Stuyvesant section of Brooklyn. Come on. (laughs) Everyone's... That stew? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, everyone's hate and bigotry smolders and builds until it explodes into violence. That's it. Nice. Uh, that, that, is all, yeah. that is all you get. To the point. To the point. So, RJ, uh, mm-hmm. this here movie is one that I watched many years ago um, mm-hmm. as a blossoming cinephile, fan of film, uh, in the nineties, there's like, there's like, there's those names of directors that like kind of go beyond like, I don't know, everyone else. Like there's, there's mm-hmm. your Steven Spielberg's, your George Lucas's, uh, mm-hmm. Martin Scorsese. Uh, and at that point in time, nineties, like probably one of the most famous film directors that probably people know his name more than have actually watched his movies is Spike mm-hmm. Lee. Um, so in my mind until I watched and I I want to say that this might have been the first Spike Lee movie I watched uh back in like uh 99 2000 renting it on video um mm-hmm. I just was like thought he was this like sh- little like black guy from New York who wore who like went to all the Knicks games <laughs> yeah like yeah there's like jokes like, like yeah him and like uh Jack Nicholson didn't like each other <laughs> Cause they yeah. don't, cause the oh, Lakers and the Knicks and like, they're, 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 they're like super basketball fans. Um, yeah. and he was very opinionated. Uh, that, that, mm-hmm. that has, that, that's pretty well true to this day. Um, yeah. but like, and he's like, Oh, he makes movies about racism and everything's about race. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like the joke is like, uh, he's a very political minded guy. People don't like maybe politics in their movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that was kind of like my sense of who this Spike Lee guy was before watching his movies. So then I watched Do the Right Thing. And at, from that point on, I've seen like, I don't know, a, what a, maybe even a, just a quarter of his movies because he's actually really prolific. But he's got he, a lot of stuff. He's man. directed a lot of movies. Uh, maybe we'll talk about it more as we go along. But like his like in some ways, he is the black Oliver Stone. And I mean that in the sense I that he's, he's, he's a guy that had a heyday where he was like a mm-hmm. big name and like he couldn't do no wrong. He even had like sort of like a, a mainstream presence uh, for a brief mm-hmm. window of time, but people don't like be to be told how to live their lives. People don't like to uh, hear about politics. They don't like celebrities and famous people talking about politics and a backlash starts setting in. And then when you start, when you start making movies that nobody really likes anymore and they become yeah. like mediocre, you start losing that too and then people stop going to your movies and start talking about you because you're not mm, relevant anymore mm-hmm. but we're going to talk about a movie here do the right thing of when yeah. spike lee was relevant and like probably at the top of his game mm-hmm. um so yeah this is like probably the third at least the third or fourth time i've seen do the right thing it's been a while um and i remember seeing this movie the first time ages and ages ago. Uh, mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, like I've always like thought really highly of this movie. Um, mm-hmm. And actually like, again, one of the other reasons I probably watched this movie back in the days, because it was part of the criterion collection. Uh, the right. DVD, the DVD cover for this is really nice. It gets this like kind of golden orange black. It's like black and gold kind of cover. Mm-hmm. It's really stands out. Um, cause like the VHS cover and like, if you got the Blu-ray of this, like that universal put out, it looks very like late eighties, New 80s. York graffiti, pastel colors. Like mm-hmm. it's kind of an eyesore, but it's like of that time. Like it's quite an accurate look, I guess that poster, but I've always like thought the criterion cover was really nice. And, um, mm-hmm. uh, Roger Ebert uh, has this on his great movies list and he's written like, I think he wrote the criterion collections liner notes for it. Um, he gave it four stars when it came out, when it screened at con, uh, back in, I guess, 89, or mm-hmm. it might've been 88, depending on when it actually came out and got screened. Uh, and then he wrote about it again in 2000 when it came out, uh, when he put it on his great movies list. And like, he's mm-hmm. like, and actually I would, argue, I would say that it's like Ebert's best writing, uh, of all the stuff I've read. This huh. is like, he talks about this movie the best, uh, like I guess I was reading his essays again for it. And I mean, they're all kind of like 
repetitive because he's kind of restating things, but I think he's got like one of the best handles on this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I, this movie is like, I think pretty amazing. I think it's mm-hmm. like, it, 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 it has aged really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, I don't know where else to go f- about it at this point other than like, I like it all, quite a bit. Uh, mm-hmm. I got I got a thing to throw out there. Actually, watching it this time, I was really aware of how Fellini esque this movie is in a lot of ways. <laughs> hey, what do you mean? <laughs> no, so it's like kind of like how it's a story about like it's a stylized world. Uh, it's, yeah, it's hyper realistic. It's very cinematic. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a lot of vignettes. Uh, it's kind of like mm-hmm. it's it's not like so much like a nostalgia piece like Amarcord is, but there's like sort of this rhythm and flow of these characters kind of moving in and out of the story, and you just kind of pick up and jump in in stories like that. Um, yeah, it, it's not like a Fellini movie, but I'd say that like from like a style like how stylized it is, it is very like that. I would couch it more into that sort of filmmaking. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I think there are like goals uh, in telling stories are very different. Um, yeah, but who, who do you, who do you think is more vignetti, uh, Spike Lee or Richard Linklater? Uh, it depends on the movie, I guess. I mean, like you're, th- I guess you're thinking of like Days and Confused. I yeah. guess. Yeah, I mean, that is like, it's like they, they, they would be the, a good the, double feature though. Those two. Yeah, yeah, I, I think even though they're they're very different, right? Well, one is like suburban white guy in Texas, <laughs> and this is like, oh, this movie's about yeah. like. <laughs> the, well, the you see all, all in, uh, you New see York. like two two different sides of America. Very it's a big place. Very different, and uh, yeah, the big place. Well, one day we will talk about Days and Confused. Uh, I know, and we'll sl- get there. And then. One day, yeah, we'll get there. You know, what, okay, yeah. keep going. So anyway, so yeah, uh, I think yeah, this Don't movie's. Yeah, Fellini. Uh, yeah, like that's like that came to my mind watching it. Just um, the colors at times are like super, like crazy intense. <laughs> like, yeah. like there's like with the three guys on the curb just sitting around mm-hmm. talking with that red background. Mm-hmm. Um, the 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 extreme colors of like the morning and stuff like that. They're like that real like orange to like sky and then it turns to blue and then it turns to dark like it's it has like a like a, a progression over the course of that day uh and it's it, has, it seems like everything's very color coded i guess for like and it's just like it doesn't serve any other purpose other than like to me uh about the experience of watching a movie because the movie is very it's very movie it's like kind of like a lot of the tricks that he does in this movie he winds up reusing again like uh mm-hmm. in malcolm x like uh, there's like the shots of like uh, of Mookie's eyes and uh, John Turturro's eyes, like Pino's mm-hmm. eyes, like the slow motion burn. Like that's something that like Spike Lee goes back to over and over again for like a lot of his career. Um, mm-hmm. And or just like the the that the scene where it's like all the the characters go through their like racial epithets and like they just go into the, cutting their promos with the zoom in mm-hmm. like that is completely reenacted again in Twenty Fifth Hour like it's the exact same thing which is why I always like like Twenty Fifth Hour is like one of his most well regarded movies and mm-hmm. it just like, it's like that scene always takes me right out because I'm like let's just do the right thing again like he just to- like full on plagiarizing himself it's such a yeah. strange bit to like do again and it's New York but it's like a movie for like a complete it's, it was him making a movie for like a a wider audience he, yeah. he does that in uh, a similar very similar thing and she's got to have it as well, well. I was going to say that like you uh, you you watched some Spike Lee movies on top of this so that it's a yeah. lot his other movies are way fresher in your mind than they yeah. are in mine because this is the first Spike Lee movie I've watched forever um yeah. But yeah, like there's like stuff I remember because I got there, there was like a Spike Lee collection that I bought. It's got like Clockers, um, mm-hmm. uh, Jungle Fever, Mo Money, Mo Blues, uh, and it's like I haven't watched a lot of this stuff for a long time. Um, mm-hmm. But like I think people kind of forget how good Spike Lee was um, mm-hmm. or could be, I guess. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like I, I think this movie's like pretty pretty awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm curious because this is a first time watch for you. What did you think of Do the Right Thing, RJ? This was a first time watch for me. Uh, so I guess you said the long awaited, uh, much anticipation for Do the Right Thing because mm-hmm. uh, we were talking about it a long time. Because it, I think it does kind of stand out within the first 100 uh, for the criterion. Um, especially like even just look at the poster, it stands out. It's like that's different from a lot of the other movies that are in there so far. So anyways, 
uh, Spike Lee. I mean, um, how many how many Criterion collections can say they have Martin Lawrence in them? Well, at least one. <laughs> at least one. Uh, so Spike Lee, I always knew, kind of like you did, through reputation almost. Yeah. Because uh, f- he is a prolific celebrity, basically. He's always at those Nick games. He's hanging out. He's speaking out. He's doing his thing. So I knew Spike Lee. The uh, two movies I had seen of his before anything else uh, were He Got Game and uh, Summer of Sam. Those were the two movies that, like, that's what I knew Spike Lee for. And which is, like, almost, like, He Got Game, I think, is very Spike Lee. Uh, Summer of Sam, it's been a while since I've seen it. But uh, I didn't even know that was Spike Lee. After I'd seen it like two, three times, and then I saw that Spike Lee made it, I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, that's like a that's kind of an odd move. Well, he was like, make, he was making stuff like because uh, yeah, it's part it of his of, New York thing, right? Yeah, or sure. yeah, yeah. And it's like that came out. It was like a weird window of time because I'd be curious to read up more about that movie because that's like a movie that I wish was yeah. better than it was because like I yeah. I, I love serial killer stuff and like I'm always yeah. like, oh, that movie could be so good and like. During that window of the late '90s, we had that the '70s nostalgia happening, mm-hmm. and so like everybody was like making movies about disco and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so this movie like had John Leguizamo. I can't remember that, and um, yeah, uh, the one character actor who's like uh, who actually plays um, Sam. So, yeah, or well, no, Sam Berkowitz. Sam Berkowitz. Yeah, David Berkowitz. Not, not David not, Berkowitz. Not, not, not the dog. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, it's Michael Badalucci yes, from. Yeah. Uh, Leon and Raging Bull and Old Brother, oh, Miller's yeah. Crossing. Yep, lots of shit. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the practice, I believe he was on as well. That's what. Yeah. I, yeah. Uh, anyway, just going to continue. Uh, uh, yeah. So I was gonna say, uh, it's funny you say that about Summer of Sam because I that came out in '99. Yeah. And I think I watched it in 2000, like it was on Showtime or something like that. So I would have been like fucking 10, ten years yeah. old. Yeah. I, I was gonna say you were a 10. <laughs> I watched a lot of these movies, like even He Got Game, whenever that came out, uh, that would have been when I watched it was like a year, 98. So I watched them like a couple years later, whenever they would have popped up on Showtime. So I was young. Uh, I remember when I was younger and I watched Summer of Sam, I thought it was awesome. I thought it was like really good. And then when I got older, I watched it again. I was like, this isn't as good as I thought it was. I was like, I wish it was kind of a better movie. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, I remembered it as being like Zodiac. And then I watched it again. I was like, "Oh no, this isn't." Uh, no. I was like, "No, no, this isn't up on those well, levels." But... Especially now, like, yeah, post Zodiac, man, Summer Sam's yeah. probably even not not was even worse. Yeah. Well, I have it, but you missed oh, your I, chance. I, 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 was, I, I, was, I have it too. <laughs> I was gonna say I would lend it to you, but anyways, so those, that's where I knew Spike Lee from, and uh, I've heard a lot about Do the Right Thing. Uh, I just never watched it because, and especially after we started doing the show. All, all that time ago, I was like, oh, yeah, that's like getting close to 100. It's like uh, that'll be a a benchmark for us. It's like once we hit do the right thing, it'll be mm-hmm. like we'll have been doing the show for a long time. Mm-hmm. So I was always like, I'll watch it then. Um, Andrea watched this with me mm-hmm. uh, and uh, we were watching it and I didn't take any notes. Uh, I have like one note or something. Yep. Uh, we both really enjoyed it. It uh um, it's it's a really great movie. It really is. Uh, it uh, it grabbed both of our attentions, uh, and we were just dialed in because there's so much to like about this, and so much to um, keep you interested. I guess like to keep your attention, like you were saying, like the colors, uh, the characters, uh, just the way it's. Uh, Andrea described it really well, actually, and I didn't I didn't totally see it at first, but she's like, this is like a music video. The way this is shot, like the way he kind of goes things or he has a very um, he, he has very short scenes that like go into right into something else. Right. So like I, that sounds weird, but it's like uh, when the Puerto Ricans or whatever are sitting on the stoop, uh, it shows them they're all opening a beer and the music's playing and they're like, yeah, and then it'll cut to like uh, the boom box and right. then it'll cut back to. No. <laughs> yeah. And, and then it'll cut back to, like, um, not even that scene. Like, before that, like, uh, standoff, yeah. uh, it shows the Puerto Ricans all drinking beer. And Andrew's like, this looks like a music video. And then it would cut to, like, the boom box. And then it would cut back to them, like, close up on the beer. And it's, it's, it's just very short, fast, like, transitions, right? So it does kind of play out like that. Um, but, uh, no, it's really good, man. Uh, I liked it more than I thought I would. Not for any reason. I was just like... 
I was like, I don't even know what that movie is about. I was like, yeah. it's Spike Lee, I guess. But it's like I was saying, the only things I've really seen of Spike Lee's before were He Got Game and Summer of Sam. I'm surprised. And, uh, See, I'm so surprised you haven't seen Inside Man. I know. Okay. I've seen Inside Man. Uh, he Got Game, Summer of Sam. That's where I, what I identify with Spike Lee. I've seen Inside Man, which I like a lot. And mm-hmm. uh, I've seen Malcolm X as well. Okay. Those, those are the only Spike Lee movies I had seen before. But He Got Game and Summer of Sam, I've seen a lot. And that's kind of how I knew him. Right. So I was like, all right. I, I was like, uh, I, it'll probably be something like that. Um, the colors in this movie are fantastic. And it's so very, like, aesthetically pleasing. Uh, just the way he shows kind of everything, like the neighborhoods and stuff like that. Uh, the characters, I think, like, uh, and this is kind of a mark in all of his movies. He has such, like expressive and like uh kind of like characters that really just open up but they totally they they all feel real in this like you have the mayor like the homeless guy he feels like a real character you have like the old dudes sitting outside like they feel real uh like the pizza guy um like they they all have their own like identity like personalities when you say and, pizza guy do you mean sal or uh sal okay sal. <laughs> not not spike yeah uh, not well, mookie well, both of them actually, Sal and Mookie, like yep. they're they're such like um, and uh, this is like I'm I won't be able to help it. I'll be talking about like all the other ones I watched this week too. Uh, the way he writes his characters, it just seems like these are all like his life, people he knew, his friends, and and because it's like the way the characters are written are so um, realized. I guess is the word people say. Like the characters just seem so like complete. That it's like this had to have been a real person. It's either this was a real person that he knew, or he's like that good at writing characters that they it just feels like it was a real person that he knew. I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, Probably, yeah. yeah. He he must be that good at writing characters. Yeah. Um so anyways, I really like this. Uh the only thing I didn't like about Do the Right Thing is I don't know if it's is it called Dutch Angle? Is that what it is? Where it's like oh, yeah, kind of yeah, 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 yeah. and then sideways. He does that a lot in this movie, and I was like, Ugh. I was like, I don't like that. Um, so uh, that that's just my own little thing. I, I visual those scenes, flare. <laughs> yeah, those scenes really took me out of it. I was like, Ugh, I don't like those. But uh, I like Sal. I like Mookie. I like Smiley. Uh, he's cool. Uh, all the characters are awesome, and it's um. I don't know. It's kind of like what you said. It's it seems, it still seems like it, it holds up really well, even though it's like a twenty year old movie or however old this fucking movie is. Uh, and, almost uh, thirty years. Almost thirty years old. <laughs> so thirty years old, and it's very, it's still relevant, and uh, it holds up. It doesn't because there's movies that were important thirty years ago, but you watch them now and you're like, ooh, like like Driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> yeah, probably like Driving Miss Daisy. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, there's one line I really like this when uh, Demare is buying a beer at the Korean store or whatever. Yeah. Those people. Yeah. Yes. And um, they, they tell him to get a different beer. And he's like, at, he's like, you're asking a lot of a man to change his beer. And I was like, I was like, I identify with you, man. Relatable. So I like that. Uh, anyways, what was I going to say? Um, there's a lot of. Uh, so I was going to say. I watched a couple other Spike Lee movies. I watched She's Gotta Have It and uh, Jungle Fever. So I, whenever we're done talking about Do the Right Thing, I can talk about all the overlap between these movies. Because I picked She's Gotta Have It because it seems like it's uh, around the same era. And I was like, I feel like it would pair yeah. well with Do yeah, the Right Thing. It was like three years earlier. And then Jungle Fever, was that his follow-up? Jungle Fever is 91. Okay, so he directed Malcolm X in between. Did he? No, Malcolm X was 92. Okay, 92. Okay. So uh, here, I, I'm going to... That makes sense, because Malcolm X was like a big movie. <laughs> it was She's Gotta Have It, School Days, mm-hmm. Do the Right Thing, Mo Better, uh, uh, Blues, and then Jungle Fever. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I don't... we. Do you, you got you probably have more to say about do the right thing? Sure, right? I, sure I do. Sure I do. Ah, uh, some some notes here. So, the one thing, so my progression with this movie over time is like the first time I watched it, there was definitely some stuff in it I did not like. Um, yep. One of those was Rosie Perez. Um, <laughs> don't be stupid. Oh my god. So I don't know that 
like Rosie Perez is this character growing up in the nineties. It's like, Oh, <laughs> she's so annoying. And then like, so we get this like r- ridiculous, uh, opening credit sequence of her dancing. And then, like, yeah, I don't mind it now as much, but I remember watching this back in the day and being like, this is just the most indulgent bullshit in the world. And it, yeah. and it, and it builds to her fucking doing these pelvic thrusts at his name, at his screen credit, when it says uh-huh. written and, pro- and directed by Spike Lee, her her fucking pelvis is just fucking writing his name, just thrusting at it. And I was yeah. just like, God damn it. Like, <laughs> it's like, this is my design. Like, oh, what, it's so goofy. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that didn't bug me as much this time. But it, it's, right. it, it's interesting now to see how something I watched after, like, it was 10 years after it had come out, it didn't feel right. But now, Mm-hmm. 30 years later it's like oh no that's just like it feels appropriate at the time and then also like reading about rosie perez and like her whole history it makes so much more sense like how we're like oh she was a choreographer like that was mm-hmm. her like business like that's what she wound up doing like this was like her first movie uh and she just like kind of kept rolling with it um and it's like why she was kind of this like weird figure of the 90s of like uh, Latino female representation, and it's like, oh, good, yeah. barky, annoying woman. <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. that's that's good. That's a very enlightening uh, stereotype. Uh, great. Um, mm-hmm. And then we have the debut of Samuel L. Jackson uh, on that collection. A debut? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, what other Criterion Collection oh, movies? Oh, okay. Is I he... thought I thought you were for for some reason. I thought you were like trying to say that was his first movie. I was going to no. make what? Well, okay, if you let yeah. me finish. If you finish le- listening to the sentence, RJ. No, yeah, no. I don't listen so, to things. Yeah, I know. So yeah, we get Samuel Jackson here. I'm not even sure if he's in anything else uh, in the collection coming up off the top of my head. But here he is, um, mm-hmm. Mr. DJ. Uh, yeah, and then we get introduced to Mookie, played by Mr. Spike Lee, which I think is a intentional choice. Considering yep. he kinds of, I mean, he's created this character that who's going to make the big momentous decision, yeah. I guess, of what this title is all about. Uh, so he puts it on himself playing that character. Um, I was going to ask you, RJ, what did you think of the score? Oh, the Public Enemy? No, well, that's the, that's the the music, the, some of the music, the, 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 the actual score. Uh, uh, I watched this three days ago, and I'm having a hard time remembering it. Okay, well, cause so like. Uh, the score, it's it's very uh, horn and like kind of jazz based, and I was wondering oh, okay. if you'd have yeah. like if you'd be like, oh, it's like Seinfeld or something like that. Because I was curious. Uh, I, 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 oh, I watching this movie, watching the movie again, I was like, oh man, I forgot about this score. And the score is really yeah. good, and it's actually done by his dad, uh, Bill Lee. Yeah. Well, I think uh, it's like what you said. Uh, good, like good scores, you don't even notice. Great scores, you're like, man, that was so good. And then bad scores, you're like, holy shit, that was bad. Yeah. Uh, so I think this is probably a good one because I don't, I didn't even remember it. So right. Yeah. Must uh, it did something right? Yeah. No, it's a. I, yeah, it's a. It's actually a really great score. Um, and then uh, Johnny, old John Turturro. Uh, yeah. With, with, in his debut on the collection. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he, he, what can you say about him? He was riding high here from like the late eighties all through the nineties. Um, mm-hmm. it's, there's so many countless great characters that he's played. He is, uh, he's such he's a, the best. He's, he's pretty good. I like that guy. Yeah. Uh, though he seems to have dropped off cause he's, I think he's doing TV and he did that one HBO show that I'm still meaning to watch like the night of Game or something Smith like that. Thrones? No, <laughs> it's like the crime show night before or something like that. I can't remember. It's supposed to be good. Yeah, the one with uh, Riz, um, whatever his name is. Riz something. Yeah. Uh, Anyways. I'll always remember uh, a friend of mine, Ira, many years ago, and I think when we watched this movie, he had some umbrage with uh, Johnny Johnny T's uh, character, Pino, saying, like, is he like the dumbest fucking white man who's ever lived? Because there's like uh, scenes of like just how – ignorant he is in, in a way that's yep. like cartoonish where it's like i don't know if anyone is like that but now that we have twitter uh mm-hmm. we realize that like no people really are this dumb and uh people are that dumb it, it doesn't seem so strange or like cartoonish or a caricature of a man who's like really into like all these black performers and actors and shit mm-hmm. and then they're, they're this dumb in horrible it's like, oh no there's, there's, mm-hmm. that's no that's re- pretty real it's pretty it's pretty accurate yeah. Uh, we have, we have uh, old, old Danny Alo, uh, Sal, the, the, the patriarch mm-hmm. of the pizzeria here. Uh, that, dude, that dude rules. Yeah, uh, he's very – yeah, he's great. This is one of his 
best movies. Uh, yeah. yeah, great character. Uh, there's one of the lines I love is "Don't start that Mookie don't work shit." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, mm-hmm. I just think that's very funny. Uh, then we get Martin Lawrence, like who I, t- I totally forgot. Being gross. I forgot he was in this at all. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then we have uh, Ozzy Davis as Dumb mm-hmm. Air. Uh, he's awesome. Uh, I'm not sure if you're, like, you probably recognize Ozzy Davis because he's been like, until he died, yeah. he was in a lot of random stuff. But he's a director in his own right too, back in the 70s, making yeah. some black exploitation. There, there's a movie where he's like a police chief or something. And that's where I re- recognize him from. He's like, what's that movie he's a police chief from? Let's find out. I don't know. Well, he was in Grumpy Old Men. Oh, yeah. Which is a very good movie that I think Jarrett's never seen, even though he's a bad person. Uh, Bubba Hotep? No, maybe it wasn't a movie. Maybe it was a TV show. Okay. <laughs> Who knows, man? Who uh, knows? He had some appearances on t- in, uh, Touched by an Angel. Ooh. Not that. <laughs> okay. I don't know. There's a movie or there's oh a TV show where he's like uh, some that, sort oh, of police this man. This is weird. Okay, so he played the same character on the show Touched by an Angel as well as on a show, oh, Promised Land? Um, I wonder is if that that a... Matt Damon movie? No, it's a TV series. Um, oh. <laughs> weird. Okay. Um, and he was a judge on the Client television series? No, Maybe... not that one. Okay. This is very... Oh, he was also... Uh... Uh, in the the stand. Well, well it sure as fuck wasn't the stand because <laughs> you still have to watch yeah. that bad boy. I don't watch that Mick Garrish shit. I don't know what TV show he was a district attorney on the show The Defenders. I'll the, find from, it from okay. the from the sixties. <laughs> I'll find it. You keep talking about whatever you were talking about. Okay. Uh, Brooklyn Summer Heat. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sure you are aware because you've watched television your whole life uh, that mm-hmm. apparently New York gets very hot. That's and, what they uh, tell us. What happens is uh, white people go upstate to their cottages mm-hmm. and hang out where it's a lot cooler than in the humidity of the city. And mm-hmm. that's where this movie takes place in. Uh, mm-hmm. And then I don't know if you did any research at all about this movie. It's like the the whole police brutality murdering people with nightsticks thing. But that was like, uh, that, that, well, really... I know about that. <laughs> well, like, uh, uh, of the eighties though, like yeah. in that window of time where like, Oh yeah, that was like an actual thing. <laughs> and this mm-hmm. was like an actual, uh, issue going on, um, in this window uh, of time. Yeah. I was going to say, I didn't, I didn't mention, but, uh, I do think that radio Raheem and, uh, Saul uh, Goodman from Breaking Bad. I think they were in the wrong there. They went into that place and they were causing trouble. Uh oh. Even though he died. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm. It's like you it's like don't you're causing trouble. <laughs> you are gonna cause trouble, you're gonna get trouble, Jarrett. Mm. <laughs> is that the is that the white man talking? It sure is. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, Keep you're, going, you're, whatever you're, you're talking about. Uh, so yeah, that actually brought up the, the next thing about boycott sales and like, uh, yeah. and like how, you know, that's like, it's still a thing to this day. Uh, social, boycott sales? So it's just, just boycotts, things like oh, that yeah. calls for boycotts, bug out, uh, that whole mentality, that, frust- sure. that frustration of things and how you go about these things. Um, and I don't know if there's anything to really say about that other than, it's like an endless storm of anger and shit online. Mm-hmm. And it seems like this is like taken from the street and has like found its way online. That's like a, a safer venue, I guess, mm-hmm. to like funnel your anger and rage. Cause it kind of like deflates itself. Cause it, right. it means like it's less likely that people are going to do anything outward, outwardly, outwardly, violent, Come on. wardly. <laughs> uh huh. Um, yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> I couldn't believe how goddamn funny that scene with Frank Vincent with his Cadillac driving by the uh, fire hydrant was. Oh, uh, I was laughing so. How funny. come? <laughs> it's so funny because <laughs> it's like you know what's going to happen, and like, oh no, no, go on, man, no, it's so good. We won't spray your car, and he's just like, you, you better not get a fucking drop of water on this fucking thing. I'll fucking kill you. And just his like, you know what's going to fucking happen, and then as soon as it happens, I just, it's so good. I, I've it's probably the most I've laughed watching like any criterion movie at this point. Like that includes like the full on comedies, the life of Brian's, this is spinal taps. Like this, like that scene yeah. is so funny to me. Um, I think it's just because Frank Vincent is like hilarious. Cause he plays yeah. the angry Italian man so well. 
Uh, mm. His indignation is so good. I believe he is uh, also in uh, Jungle Fever. Yeah. Uh, he's pretty premium in that one. Yeah. I'll get there, though. Okay. You keep talking. Um, another great line, uh, the, the three dudes sitting out on the sidewalk, hanging out. Uh, when w- one dude goes to the Korean place to go get his beer, it's Miller time, motherfuckers. Uh, that, yeah. that, that, that is a great line. Uh-huh. Um, and then this movie is just, like, jam-packed with, like, so many monologues and scenes, mm-hmm. all those vignettes and just moments. Uh, and it's like, wow, like, they do, they just don't make movies like this anymore. Like, nobody thinks, hey, let's just, like, write a bunch of scenes and, like, funnel it all together and figure out how to make it work and edit it together so it all works as, like, a coherent movie. Like, the, mm-hmm. the, the movies just don't get made like this. And that's why this movie is, like, such a joy to watch, too, because it's so easy yeah. to watch because it's, like... Nothing overstays its welcome. It's like, oh, there's no real plot. It's just characters hanging out and talking. And, yeah, like... Ugh. A day in the life, man. Fuck. Like, I'm sure that, like, fucking Shape of Water doesn't have follow this type of structure. I'm sure it's... Hey, you can't say that. I'm sure. I'm saying I'm sure that it doesn't. Uh, I haven't seen it, but... Let's, uh, let, let's who's just, the real I, monster here? I, I don't think probably, like, any of the goddamn movies that got nominated follow this uh, this type of feeling. Um, but What know. about Dunkirk? That's a day in the life. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't, ugh. the more I think about that movie. Whatever. <laughs> the more I think about that movie, it's got some issues. Um, Fine. Okay. Scene that I've never been a fan of, and yeah. of course it's, it features Rosie Perez, is Ice Cube scene. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that me like Andrew and I looked at each other and we we're just like, what the fuck is going on? But also, uh, Spike Lee is indulgent, as I uh, came to find <sighs> watching his other movies. Yep, uh, he has scenes like that in like lots of movies. Man, mm-hmm. he just loves. He's a perv, I think. He's an old pervert. <laughs> yeah, well, at the time he was a young pervert. I mean, he was uh thirty two when he made this. Okay, young enough. Um, there's a throwaway line about like uh, selling pizza places and whatnot, and they talk about Trump's pizza. Yeah, I and I'm like, that. oh, I can only imagine what Spike Lee thinks of fucking Donald Trump, because mm-hmm. man, if you're a New Yorker, you have a very specific view of Donald Trump, I'm sure. I'm sure. And now the world does. Um, yes. but yeah, that ice scene is weird, and uh, I didn't like it. See, that's what I mean. Like, I think this is a really great movie, but there are certain things that um, I didn't like, like the Dutch angle stuff. I didn't really like that. Uh, the ice cube scene is a little goofy. There, so there's there's like things that kind of take you out, like took me out of it a little bit. But on the whole, it's on the whole, it's still an A plus. It's yeah. just there. There are certain things. It's like it's like, Ugh. It's like, it's nit- like why is that in yeah, there? Yeah, it's like mostly just nitpicks. Yeah. Um, because like the whole of the movie is like. Pretty, pretty good. Um, yeah. yeah, so the end of this movie stresses me out so bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, fuck it, man. I, go on. Oh, so and as, as we go, uh, it all the tensions build. Night comes. You're, you're getting that relief from the sun, but, like, things are still not dying down. Uh, the, yeah. It's just like, oh, hey, let these guys in. Let them order some pizza. And it's like, oh, Sal, you shouldn't have done that. Mm-hmm. And then um, fucking Bug Out and Radio Rahim, they're all fucking hot and they're, they're just demanding action and it mm-hmm. just keeps pushing and pushing and pushing. And then Sal smashes the fuck out of that goddamn um, <laughs> radio. Did you find that scene satisfying or upsetting? Oh, well, I knew, well, no, like it kept building and I was like, oh, God. And then I know, cause like, I know what happens. Like I remember this end of this movie cause it has such a different feel to the rest of the movie, which is very like life affirming and fun mm-hmm. and spirited. And then it gets all grim as dark fuck. And you're like, Oh God. And then it gets violent and everyone starts mm-hmm. losing their shit and they're shouting and stuff like that. And they set this up too, because the uh, one scene earlier that we haven't talked, talked about is, um, when, um, bug outs like out front, and uh, his his white runners get rolled over by the dude's bike. Oh yeah, and like how like the Martin Lawrence crew roll up. Yeah, and they're just like they're just egging them on. They want to see a fight because it's funny. Yeah, like they they don't give a shit. They're just like oh yeah, pick him up. Oh my god, did you see what that guy just did? Oh, and like they're just yeah. trying to pick a fight. And the guy's like, I'm from here. Like what's going on? And like yeah. it's like that. That's a like oh, that's a pretty stressful situation to be in. Yeah, they also make fun of that uh, the homeless man for a while, and then also you're just like oh, that's d- d- of the d- dumb air. Yeah, I mean, dumb it's air. Like, but I guess it's like an, uh, a statement of the a viewpoint of poor yeah. people, and it's like like there's like no like 
uh, Eaton Ebert's reviews, he talks about it. It's like where there's like no good guys. There's no bad guys. They're just like people. And this is like kind of the thing that happens like with where the controversy, I guess, of this movie comes. It's like, so when this movie came out, there was like a lot of critics that thought this movie was going to start race riots. Like, like there was uh-huh. like, there was like genuine concern. And like, that was like one of the things, like the talking points coming out of con about this movie is like when this, this movie shows in America, it's going to, people are going to go into the streets. It's like, Oh, that's weird. <laughs> um, just, just black people or what? Is that like, what people I, were afraid of? I guess so. Well, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, I guess this was before, like, the L.A. riots, before Rodney okay. King, right? So yeah. th- there's, like, been precedents for riots and stuff like that. And so this was one of those things where there was, like, fears. America's a weird place. They have some, uh, com- yeah. they have some complicated feelings uh, and views. Go on, on this, more about like your that. viewpoints. Oh, not mine. I'm talking about America's viewpoints. Uh, uh, we, we, Canada's got its own problems. Um, gotcha. But, uh, yeah, so... I remember when I first watched this movie, when I was uh, in high school, I was of the mind of like, why does, why does Mookie throw the garbage can through the window? That's like, that's like, that's not a good way of solving these things at all. I just like, and that's like, I think a pretty common feeling. Typical like, white uh, man. Yep. Very typical white man. And then mm-hmm. like, I don't know, years later when I watched it again, I was like, no, I feel a little bit differently about this now that I know more about the mm-hmm. world and other people's experiences and like what was, what's actually happening and like what the point of doing the right thing is. Um, yeah. cause there's like a, like a, I guess like some people get feel violated watching this movie because they think Mookie is like this hero and he, he will do the right thing. And when he mm-hmm. like kind of, I guess it seemingly turns on yeah. his like, this like father figure employer friend of his yeah. and destroys like the only thing he has in this world that he holds like any pride in people are like, what the fuck? Like that's the yeah. worst thing he could have done. There's like, he had nothing to do with it. It was the cops. Why didn't they go kill the cops? And it's just like, mm-hmm. and they, they always make these things. And it's like, people just feel like betrayed by Mookie because he's like the character hero. But it's like, I don't know. He's yeah. like, even before then he's presented as like, kind of like, like a not like a deadbeat dad, but kind of like I don't know. Well, that's he's, what, he's this young dad much. who's like yeah. kind of in and out of his kid's life. He'll swing by like um, it's like Rosie Perez's mother. She has some unkind words for him, mm-hmm. and he's just like, "Don't speak my, yeah. my son to speak English. I don't want him to speak Spanish." And yeah. uh, like he's like not like a great dude at any at any point, but no one is. And like that's the thing where this movie like that that's like kind of the success of this movie is mm-hmm. there is no easy answers and like. There's like people who think that like it's like a militant racial tirade of like black superiority, and it's like no, I don't think like mm-hmm. that. I don't think that at all. This movie, like, I mean, plus like the whole crux of the goddamn movie, the final scene or the final moments of the movie is like a block of text of Martin Luther King's uh, mm-hmm. one of his speeches and Malcolm X saying we should avoid violence unnecessary. And Malcolm X is like, well, sometimes violence is completely necessary. And, Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's called intelligence to use it. And so like, it's, it's, it's presenting the dichotomy of like violence and nonviolence in the world that we live. And like, yeah, there is no easy answers. And that's like the whole point of this movie. And it's like, it's, it's awesome that this movie exists and like, doesn't try to like go down the, uh, Oscar Beatty patronizing route of like a crash, uh, which was mm-hmm. like, it's like the worst piece of shit garbage imaginable. Um, and this movie is like, d- avoids all those trappings um, by not being that. And it's like, oh, here's a, here's the, here's the world and presented it. And like, it's beautifully made, uh, really well written with great characters. Um, and it draws mm-hmm. you in and it creates like, and people still have like really strong reactions to the movie. Like I was reading like a, a comment thread on the, like, Ebert's like great movies review and there's people going to town like so passionate about uh the wrongness of Mm -hmm. what Mookie does and like there is the comment about uh I think I'm not sure if uh Spike Lee mentions it it's like he was I think on the DVD he talks about uh he's reading reviews that he got Mm -hmm. and he had this one like this one critic Joe Klein talks about like how the destruction the just destruction of the pizzeria is like unjustified but like completely ignores the fact that uh radio raheem was just murdered by the police like Mm -hmm. it's like people are really obsessed and this is like a problem i have with society in general is people have equated uh 
private property and its destruction with that of the loss of human life. Like, they think it's like the same thing, which is fucked up beyond belief to me. Like, things are things. They're not real. They're, like, they're just objects. And like, but man, people are so hung up on the things they own. And I get that. Like, I get caught up in like, if someone steals something of mine, I get mad about that. People like, that's just human nature to get mad about things. But th- there's like a huge difference between like the vandalism of private property mm-hmm. and like someone being killed and but, but man in america in particular uh like the 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 heart of capitalism and materialism it's just like they're, they're the same crime to, to a lot of people and in fact some people would value uh an object more than they would a life and that's crazy and uh that and that like the reaction that people have watching this movie which isn't even real life it's a movie depicting mm-hmm. like a situation people like get oh i can't believe it but i guess there's like an inta- like, in the emotional attachment that because like the whole like relationship that sal has to that pizzeria in that neighborhood mm-hmm. it's really well established like we're not supposed to just shrug our shoulders at the loss of the the building and like that man's livelihood or whatever um like the whole this idea uh, of like doing the right thing i mean mookie probably did do the right thing and in fact he saved people's lives in some sense like he did something harsh but at the same time it's like what was going to happen otherwise like if the people decided oh we're going to like beat the shit and maybe kill these three italian guys uh, cause we're that mad or we'll take out our rage on inanimate objects <laughs> and mm-hmm. like, and those guys are going to be mad and like, so fucking like miserable. And Pino will just be like his, everything that he's ever thought will be confirmed. Um, like, man, if you've never heard, uh, anyone snarl out, uh, end bombs so deliciously as John Turturro mm-hmm. in this movie where you're like, fuck, like it, I almost like laugh at how like, mean he delivers those um Mm -hmm. because it's like oh it's like jesus what a what a guy but um yeah i don't know the like i I remember going through this process because the first time i watched it i was kind of like and i argued uh with a friend of mine who was is like a visible minority and he had a completely different view of this movie like he was like no it's like whatever it's like no that they, they should have done this and spike lee has said on occasion it's like the only people who ever bring up the pizzeria thing or doing the right thing are white people the only people who ever mm-hmm. talked to him about it are white people. People of color all get it. So, I don't know. It's interesting. What a what a what a great movie, RJ, to stimulate those types of ideas and thoughts. <laughs> Stimulating. Stimulating. Possibly. Do you have any? Possibly. Do you have any thoughts to what I just rambled on about? Um, I did at the time that you were saying things, but you said a few things, and now I can't remember all the things that I was going to say while you were saying things. Hmm. If that makes sense. Right. Uh, I do think that there are black people and white people in this movie. Whoa. That's a statement that I'm going to stick by. (laughs) All right, then. No, I hear you, man. Like, I don't know. I would never go on to act like I know a ton about this stuff, but I feel like this movie uh, speaks louder than I can. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I guess maybe is the point. Well, yeah, as you can say to critics of the movie, go make your own movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so if you don't yeah. like The Last Jedi, go make your own movie. <laughs> go make your own Jedi. Yeah. Your so uh, you watched some other Spike Lee movies that I don't I think did. are that are not as good as this. <laughs> no, 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 no. So uh, I watched She's Gotta Have It, which was obvious because it's his first movie. And uh, it's very much like this. It even takes place in the bed stew area, the same that Do the Right Thing does. Yeah. And it has certain character archetypes that are in Do the Right Thing. Yeah. So we, me, uh, like Andrew and I watch this, and uh, Netflix has a show called She's Got to Have It. I don't yeah. know if you knew that. I, I did not know that until you messaged me asking me questions about like, is this like like a shared universe? So yeah. So the reason I brought that up, mm-hmm. and now I have confirmation of my own statements, uh, is because Andrea watched. She's got to have it on Netflix, and then we were watching Do the Right Thing, and she was like, "Whoa!" Because like she knew it was the same. Like she's like, "So did Spike Lee make the TV show?" I was like, "No, I think it's just based on his stuff." And she's like, "Well, there's like characters in the TV show." that are in this movie do the right thing. Right. Like, I think the most notable one is a is yeah. actually in it. But, uh, she was saying that even character like, um, 
like the way characters were like uh so there's a character and she's got to have it called mars which is played by spike lee mm-hmm. and in this one she's like a uh, mookie uh they say it's very similar like they're a little different one's a pizza guy one's like a bike guy with like goofy gla- gla- glasses and stuff but essentially they're both spike lee so like each of the character acts kind of like the way spike lee would um so she's got to have it is about uh, a nymphomaniac lady uh, she's not a nymphomaniac, but uh, she's just like, you know, doing her thing. She's kind of like dating a few guys at the same time. Uh, there's like one dude, uh, Mars, Spike Lee, who's like the fun guy. So he's just, like, kind of goofy. He's fun. There is uh, the intellectual guy who uh, is very proper and like uh, mentally stimulating. And then there is the beefcake guy. And uh, so she's like trying to decide which guy to go with. Um we only watched half of this movie. We didn't oh. finish it. Uh, this is what I would describe as art house uh, trash. <laughs> um, it's black and white for about half of it, and then I think it goes to color. Uh, it's got lots of monologues where it's like they introduce characters, and then it's a monologue. It's like, well, when I met the man, this is what I thought. Let me tell you now. This is how it is. And then they do stuff like that, and it's – I don't know. I don't really – there's some movies that I think it that's stuff like that can work. And then there's some movies that can't. Uh, I think the biggest problem this one has is it's dated and uh, it's very obviously like, so it was his first movie. It was yeah. low budget. And I'm, I can guarantee that uh, the actors were either people he knew or actors that were working for free almost because that's what it feels like. Like, uh, and like, that's not a thing too. like, I'll watch movies with bad actors, but uh it just had it had a lot of that feel where it was just like this is very much like uh like a st- like a student's movie in university almost it's like their it was their thesis movie but at the same time it was like it got it was made well enough that it got enough attention it's like yeah this is just like a full movie even though that's very much what it felt like was i don't know it feels like a university kid made a movie and uh that's basically it like i don't know we it was kind of boring it's not funny it's just kind of just kind of there but there are things like the characters that go in between yeah you know what i mean i really don't remember if i've seen this movie um but i also feel like i i think i've marked jungle fever as a movie i've seen but like i watched the trailer for it and I, I don't remember it at all. So, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. That sounds like – it sounds like a first film. And it sounds like it, someone figuring stuff out. And, uh, yeah, they, is. I, no one really talks about that movie that much. But yeah, like no, you, and yeah. I don't think you would because it's not that good. And it's like I said, it's like art house stuff. Like there's mm. – so it's like we were saying in Do the Right Thing, like the Ice Cube sex scene. There's a, There's a few indulgent sex scenes in this movie where it's just like – There's one where it's all about like candles and a bed and it's just like this kind of goofy sex scene where I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I was like, I feel like this goes on too long and it's like I don't really know what the point is other than to just have this gratuitous like sex scene for a while. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm a prude. I don't know. You are. Yeah. So that's she's got to have it. So then we watch Jungle Fever. And uh, the reason I this has been on my radar for a while because it's got my main man, Brad Dourif. And I was like, I got to watch that Jungle Fever to boost up my Brad Dourif credits. And I was like, what? I was like, I'll never, ever watch this other than during right Spike now. Lee week. Uh, so Jungle Fever, Jarrett, is about Wesley Snipes. And he meets, he is a strong, uh, confident black man. He's a professional. He's got a good business job. And he uh, meets a young Italian woman. And she's white. And uh, she gets the jungle fever, and he gets the jungle fever, and they're uh, interracial dating. Oh um, my god! It's uh, it's very like oh, oh. Um, so like, this, it's like far from heaven. It's kind of like far from heaven, although that movie is good. Jungle Fever is not good, Jared. Mm. It is not a good movie, and it's too bad because there's like there's honestly like there's some parts that are like really really good like all the race dialogue um is good like i mean obviously that's like spike lee is good at that uh it's got awesome characters and so i did have some confirmation the cops from do the right thing 
are in Jungle Fever. Mm. Same guys. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, so you know how the mayor hooks up with that old lady? Yeah. In uh, Do the Right Thing? Mother those sister. Two, mother sister. Yeah. Uh, those two actors are married in this one. They're playing different characters. But I like to think that maybe it was just like. She took them in, the homeless, the mayor, and then uh, they got better lives. Mm-hmm. But anyways, no, they're they're different, but they're, yeah. they're together. In this. But, like, the cops are literally the same cops. Uh, so there is some overlap. Um, the characters are awesome. Uh, there's a corner shop with uh, John Turturro. He runs, like, a corner coffee shop, and he's, like, supposed to marry the Italian woman. Mm. And, like, his story is pretty good, too, because it's, like, his like uh, fiance leaves uh, with Wesley Snipes, and then everyone's kind of making fun of him, and he's just like, "What am I supposed to do?" And then he meets a nice young black woman, and then he starts to date her, and then everyone gives him shit for that too. So you get it on both sides. It's a white yeah. man dating a black woman, and a, a black man dating a white woman. You know, so it's, you, it's funny. Your description sounds way more familiar than the trailer does. <laughs> like when I walk, yeah, I'm sure the trailer's not good. Yeah. So uh, there, there's good stuff. Uh, the best part of this movie, Jared, is uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Mm-hmm. He plays a crackhead uh, <laughs> named Gator, uh-huh. and he is fucking amazing. And I'm not even kidding. Like that's not an exaggeration. He's awesome. Uh, every scene with him is wicked good. So right. he's Wesley Snipes' brother. And uh, their parents are uh, those two old people, and they're uh, the guy is an old uh, pa- like preacher, and uh, the the wife or like the mom she has dementia and she can't really do anything. So like Sam Jackson always goes to their house and like steals stuff and takes money. Very Jared Leto from Requiem for a Dream style. Mm. He's like stealing TV and stuff like that. Uh, but the best part with Sam Jackson is whenever he wants something like from his mother, he dances. She's like, show me that little dance you got. And he like shakes his shoulders a little bit and he starts dancing. And uh, there's there's scenes later like he's fighting with his dad. And uh, you think like something really big is going to happen. And Sam Jackson's like, I'm going to show you something right now. Been working on a new move for you. And he like starts like shimmying and shaking. <laughs> it's it's fucking amazing. It's so funny. But it, it's it feels really like genuine. It's like, yeah, maybe crackheads do do shit like that. So there's stuff like that that's really good. But then this movie is just fucking horrible. Like, um, so what, it's super what, yeah, goofy. What, so it's it's the tone. No, so like it's it goes back and forth between like super serious and then like kind of goofy. But yeah. I don't think it's supposed to. Uh, it feels like a TV movie. It has a lot of fade to black, hmm. like in between scenes, like just fading to black. Uh, there's a lot of like '90s transition stuff where like Sam Jack or Wesley Snipes is on his bed and then like black like a black like black and closes on his face into a circle like like scenes like yeah yeah like scenes like that there's a lot of those and they feel kind of out of place the music is really weird in this because they all feel like um christmas songs but they're not they Mm -hmm. just they have like it's like it it's like well that's like wish you a merry christmas Mm -hmm. but it's like something else is going on it's like that music is weird um uh, there's like some, there's some other weird stuff in it. Like just the way that characters interact with each other. And I don't know, this thing's over two hours long and it has, <laughs> it's two hours and six minutes long. Uh, and this movie, I, I can safely say might have one of the worst endings any I've ever seen. So I saw someone uh, else on letterbox say that and I'm like, okay, what's the ending? Hey, do you want me to tell you? I'm asking. <laughs> okay, so, like, the whole movie is, like, Wesley Snipes because he leaves, like, his wife and daughter for this white woman, right? And uh, he walks his daughter to school all the time. And a couple times that she he's walking with his daughter, he uh, uh, comes across, like, prostitutes, like crackheads. One of which is Halle Berry, which I think is one of her first movies here. She looks like she's 18. Yeah. Uh, and the prostitutes are always like, I'll suck your dick for $5. Yeah. And uh, he... He's always like, get away from us. And then he'll like take his daughter and he'll be like, he like yells at her. He's like, don't you ever do drugs. And she's like, okay, because his brother is a uh, gator, Sam Jackson, and he's a crackhead. Yeah. So he's, he's like, don't ever do drugs. Oh, by the way, Wesley Snipes name in this movie is flipper. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so like there's stuff like this with the, like, so there's, uh, there's this like thing about, Wesley Snipes dealing with his brother who's a crackhead 
and then he's like leaving his family and then at the end of the movie he's like trying to get back with his wife because he leaves the white woman again and there's this there's this really uh gross scene where like they're doing it and she's crying and the daughter always listens to wesley snipes and the mom doing it and that's kind of creepy too like the daughter's always awake and she's like <laughs> like has a smile on her face and it's like ooh, gross but anyways so wesley snipes goes to the daughter's room and uh she's like will you walk me to school today and he's like no not today and it shows him walk out of the uh apartment building and he's walking to the corner and a prostitute comes out and she goes uh, she's like, you got $5, I'll suck your dick, daddy. Mm-hmm. And Wesley snipes, the, like the daddy triggers him. And it z- he grabs her head, pulls it into her, uh, his body, and it zooms in super fast. And he, he gives a big Darth Vader, no! And the, it like shakes and it's zooming in. And then it just fucking ends. It's like out of nowhere. It's super like <laughs> abrupt and like... It's honestly, it's out of nowhere. It's like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, why did they put that in here? Huh. <laughs> so a prostitute asks, uh, she's like, I'll suck your dick, daddy. And he's like, no. And it oh. zooms in. And then it's like freeze frame on a screaming face, uh, Wesley Snipes. Yeah. Great. So it's it's goofy, man. Like, I don't know whose idea that was. Hmm. Oh, and the uh, intro, it's really like, it's like, they have a theme song. It's like he got jungle fever. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. got jungle fever. Mm-hmm. And it's like street signs, but the street signs say things like the N word and then crack. Yeah. Like crack street. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. Hey, uh, what, 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 what is, what is Brad Dourif doing this movie? Not hardly anything. Uh, okay. Brad Dourif and Tim Robbins are in this movie. Okay. So, uh, Wesley Snipes is like, he's not like, he's like an architect or some, something like that. Yeah. Like an, Let's say an architect, and uh, he works for Tim Robbins and Brad Dourif, and he asked for a promotion, and uh, because he like he's like you said you would make me a partner in the firm or like whatever they do, and they're like it's not the right time now, and they're all drinking white wine too, which is weird because they're, they're in white. like an office. Yeah, they're all drinking white wine, and uh, he asked for a promotion, and they say no, and then uh, he leaves. Brad Dourif's in it for like a couple minutes, but beautiful. Tim Robbins is really bad. Because Sam ja- or uh, Wesley Snipes is walking out, and he's like, he's like, I brought you this client, I brought you this client, and Tim Robbins is like, ego, ego, ego. He just keeps like screaming ego and pointing at stuff. Yeah. Tim Robbins is bad, but uh, Jungle Fever is bad. Okay, so avoid. There you have it. Yeah, yeah. I would not unless you, if you interested, you could probably just YouTube the ending because it's, <laughs> it's fucking weird, man. Like I don't know. Cat. Okay. Someone thought it was a good idea. I might do that. Uh, um, okay. So avoid those, but do the right thing is ace. Yeah, do the right thing is very good. But yeah. you know, but you know, RJ, there are people who don't share this opinion. And well, I'm sure there's, there's, quite a there's some people who hate do the right thing. And yeah. we'll just run through a few people here. Half stars for from uh, Cordell Hammond. Race baiting the movie. My <laughs> God, the camera work is sloppy and weird. Uh, uh, I didn't like the camera work either. Well, there's like, it. well, there's like, I'd say the camera work's pretty good, except for those stylizations that are like a couple of things. Like, the, the, yeah. the, there's only a couple of moments of those. Yeah. Um, half a star. Saul, good. I hated this. Radio Rahim and bugging out. We're or we're completely in the wrong. And the only way I can imagine anyone liking this movie would be to see these characters' actions justified. If you fall into that camp, you are a moron. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jessica Sagawa, half a star. Continuing with my AFI list, last night I watched number 96, Do the Right Thing. That's funny. This is 97 in the Criterion Collection. I was not impressed in the least. <laughs> Maybe it would have been a lot more poignant if I watched it when it came out in 1989. But in 2012, this movie mostly just inspired boredom. I didn't appreciate the camera work. The scenes felt disconnected. The dialogue was like they had just been parts of some lame poetry slam that all got jammed together to create <laughs> one big story. That's only purpose was to infuriate you, no matter what you think was the right thing. There were some great actors, and it was cool to see a very early Martin Lawrence. But the accolades this movie received, including being part of the National Film Registry, are beyond me. 
My favorite part of the movie, honestly, was seeing the guy who takes Ferris's car from the garage and Ferris Bueller's day off in another film. That was the high point for me. Um, I think I kind of agree with the slam poetry thing. That's kind of funny. But uh, in what world is seeing Martin Lawrence in this movie good? He's in this movie for like five fucking seconds. Who give, who gives a shit? Yeah. You should go watch Black Knight instead. That's a good movie. Well, this is a good movie too, but that's a good Martin Lawrence movie. And Alex, half a star. Do the Right Thing is a film that contradicts the message it tries to convey. Do the Right Thing is a terrible film because there are so many contradictions that it just doesn't make sense. The film is a sad attempt at trying to raise important issues but fails miserably. I can't take this film seriously because of the contradictory message it displays. I thought it was an absolutely pointless exercise in exposing racial ignorance. The film would have worked if the contradictions wouldn't have been there. Like, for example, finally, uh, using violence is doing the right thing. Right. I am not racist and have no hatred whatsoever for black uh, people. Uh, but, uh. <laughs> personally, I think this film insults the black community and reinforces the stereotypes against them. Spike Lee is an aw, aw, or awful filmmaker who practically mm. remakes the same film over and over. Do the Right Thing is a piece of crap that looks dated, and I don't see what's so great about the film. All I see are a bunch of people who contradict themselves in the film. <laughs> I'll stick with American History X and Mississippi Burning. At least those films brought to light important issues that Do the Right Thing try to do without doing the wrong thing. This film does the wrong thing all the way, and by the film's conclusion you feel empty, and you wonder if Mookie did really do the right thing. He didn't, and I thought the film was fairly awful considering the subject matter. I honestly believe this could have been a good attempt, but it has too much contradicting points to make this film a worthwhile viewing experience. What are, what's all the contradictions? Like, what what things contradicted others? I don't really understand. Uh, yeah, and it's like... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that those the contradictions that I would say are contradictions are intentional, and they're not even like necessarily contradictions. It's like again back to the like final like scene of this movie, which is like quotations from Martin Luther King and yeah. from Malcolm X, who were like had completely different approaches to what they were doing. But there's like the whole thing is like here's a photo of them together smiling yeah. <laughs> and it's like yeah. yeah it's like yeah the world's a complex thing and it's like yeah both these men no matter what they said guess what they're fucking dead they were fucking murdered <laughs> it's like yeah like fuck like yeah. oh fuck oh rj yeah i don't think it's it really so i don't mad. think contradiction <laughs> is the right word yeah no it, <laughs> uh yeah no uh, anyway that man you seem you seem all hot and bothered. Oh, you're, you're riled up. I'm riled. I'm fired up. I'm gonna throw a fucking garbage can through somebody's window. It's about time. Uh, yeah. God damn it. Anyways, uh, yeah, this movie's great. Uh, watch it if you haven't already. You don't need my yeah. recommendation, honestly. I mean, just go see it. It's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, unless you're a racist, then you probably won't like it. But you're probably not listening to this, so it's all good. No, we probably have one. Uh after the break, uh, two slices, please. Slices of what? Pizza. Oh. 